What is good, everybody? Today we are back with the second half of From the Vault Series number two, WWE Elite Ringside Exclusive Wave here, man. And we have Paul Heyman, Eddie Guerrero, Rikishi, and Undertaker. If you missed our review of Shawn Michaels, Diesel, Billy Gunn, and Road Dog from yesterday, definitely go check those out, or you can watch them back back, and essentially it'll be like seeing the full set in one full swoop there. But today we are back with the second half, and I'd like to know down in the comment section below as well, is this four set better or the other four set better? I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. I honestly think it's tough because I really am looking forward to these two figures for a couple reasons, even though I don't think Paul Heyman necessarily belonged in this wave. I think yesterday won. I think yesterday won. I think, you know, this is going to be another Rikishi that we already saw in a Greatest Hits wave, essentially, and then the Undertaker's Kane. I didn't even like that figure when it first released, and then we finally have a good Eddie Guerrero right here, which is a pretty much elite version of the ultimate, but it's not Shreddy Guerrero, you know what I'm saying? So we have a lot of stuff, a lot of lore to get into today. We're going to crack open all the details here, man. But if you want to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but this should be a fun one, man. As we unpack from the Vault Series number two, we are starting things off with the wise man. We got Paul Heyman over here. Paul Heyman, this figure, I'll, I'll tell you each re-release, like what it essentially was in the beginning. And this was a part of a random WWE Elite three pack that was Amazon exclusive. I think it also found its way into some TJ Maxx stores, some other stuff like that. This is the Paul Heyman from that pack, but it includes a basic head sculpt from a previous Paul Heyman and a Build-A-Figure Paul Heyman head sculpt from a previous figure. So there's some cool lore around this Paul Heyman right here, and he comes with the Blue Universal and WWE Championships. We have Eddie Guerrero here, which... <sighs> It's, it's kind of unfortunate, man. It's kind of unfortunate because I don't think they really fixed the skin tone here. They said they fixed the skin tone. Looks to be the exact same skin tone. It does come with the WWE Championship. This is based on the Legends WWE Elite Eddie Guerrero from back in the day. And it's a much better head sculpt, obviously. It's the same gear we've seen now. This is the third time we've gotten this gear. But I don't know. I just think that it's not the right skin tone in comparison to the SmackDown 4-pack, which we'll take a look at when we get into some comparisons with this figure. But I am happy to have this Eddie Guerrero. More Eddie, more time. Love it. And then we have... Rikishi right here, which I think is an Elite 27 re-release, if I'm not mistaken, and that figure was redone in Hall of Champions, and then we got it in the Greatest Hit Series 1, and it's, I, I know it's not identical, but it's very, very similar, and we're going to unpack all those details, get into it, break it all down, but he comes with a SmackDown Tag Team Championship, and it's cool because I think every single figure comes with a championship in this wave, which is very cool, so eight figures, multiple championships, a lot of gold to go around, but the last figure is going to be a formally done ringside exclusive so it's back here as a ringside exclusive it is undertaker as kane two in one figure with the mask and the interchangeable kane head sculpt and we do have undertaker as kane right here so it's a, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weirdy but we kind of just got this in the defining moment set right it's very very similar which we'll get into but he comes with a wwf championship but i think that is all of the time i have for the entrances here today for the packaging but i am uh, looking forward to this we're gonna unbox them talk about them look at them see what all they're about man but nonetheless let's shut the hell up crack all of them out of the packaging find Find out what this second half of From the Vault Series 2 is. And at the end of the video, we're going to rank From the Vault Series number 2 from worst to best, including all the figures. All eight figures will be ranked here today. So let's shut the hell up and get into it, Brad. So here is our second half of From the Vault Series number two featuring Paul Heyman, Eddie Guerrero, Rikishi, and Undertaker as Kane or a Kane 2-in-1 ringside exclusive formally. Dual sleeve deal going on, man. And a lot to discuss with all these figures. But just like the first go around, we are going to dive into each figure's accessories, each figure individually. We'll wrap it all up and I'll give you all of my thoughts on all of these figures that we feature here today. So with that being said, man, let's dive into it, shut the hell up, and digress into these action figures. So getting into Eddie Guerrero's accessories, we do have a championship just like the rest of the waves. And it's one of the most underrated title designs of all time. One of my favorite WWE championships ever, man. The Undisputed Championship, the, you know, WWE Championship, whatever you want to say. It is a smaller version. They've made a couple of versions here, and this title for me is just so nostalgic, and it's so nice. Such a clean title. Very excited to have another one of these in the collection because it's not, you know, it's kind of a rare championship when you think about it, but this is a perfect piece for Eddie Guerrero. You can put this on so many guys. I love this title. I think it looks great in figure form from Mattel, and I love the small version. It just looks so damn good and classic. Just, yeah, I love it. And and then for his interchangeable hands, you do get the fisted hands with the white pegs for the white hand tape. You get mic holding hands to hold microphones and stuff. I got a little skin tone run right there. Not the biggest deal ever because I have so many interchangeable hands, but hopefully that is not just a recurring thing. And last but not least, you do have the Randy Orton style entrance hands, you know, where he's, you know, kind of on the turnbuckle there, but they used them for Eddie Guerrero, which I think are great hands. Very expressive hands. Any hands that make the figures come to life, always a fan of that. 
So for Eddie Guerrero, I really don't like that this figure is looking off to the right, and I don't like that they didn't fix the skin tone, man. They did not fix the skin tone. We were told the skin tone was going to be fixed, and it's the same skin tone, man. It's the same. It's the same. There's nothing different. They fixed it on the four pack, you know, the Target four pack, little SmackDown. It's supposed to be this skin tone. It is not. So that's uh, that's unfortunate because this figure is so good and everything like that, and we'll compare it and everything. But the likeness is good and everything. You do have the Macho Man torso, jack shoulders and arms. Got the tattoo on the forearm right there and he does have his no way out gear with the red the gold green black attire obviously got latino on the back right there then he does have his gold boots which is you know not a bad figure i do like the figure of course it is eddie guerrero it's an updated take but it, i mean it's basically the ultimate edition with a better torso i mean that's that's pretty much what you're getting right here you're not getting anything else so i don't know it's just pyp pick your poison the boots are slightly different between this one and the ultimate edition but and you know he's gonna be able to pose around he can kick forward nice, double jointed knee, you know, all the different bells and whistles I think you're going to enjoy. It's just, I don't know, man. That just If they fix the skin tone, it would be like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. And everything but let's get into some figure comparisons so for your eddie guerrero figure comparisons from left to right you have the target exclusive smackdown four pack cheat to win eddie guerrero you have the ultimate edition right here which is essentially this figure there's not very much separating the two besides the shreddy guerrero ultimate warrior jack torso and then you do have the elite 95 no the elite 95 is over here and then you have the legends with a boot swap so this is the newest Legends figure, the newest Legends Eddie Guerrero. But yeah, there's a... Uh, God, I just... I wish they would have fixed the skin tone, but I, I still like all the Eddies. I'm glad to have this Eddie because I don't like the shreddy Guerrero over here. But yeah, they just, God, they did him wrong, man. But it doesn't look half bad with the shirt on there at least. But yeah, that's your Eddie Guerrero figure compares. Up next, we do have Paul Heyman's accessories. And uh, Degum, he, he almost has like an Ultimate Edition style accessories going on. Two championships, three interchangeable heads. This is ridiculous. Now, we've seen these titles a lot, but you do get the Blue Universal Championship with the Roman Reigns side plates because he did enter, you know, with both of these titles over his shoulder for over a year. I mean, my God, the man was out there killing it, but we also get the WWE Championship, which uh, both of these look to be very, like, painted very well. These are the updated versions in terms of paint style. They look very clean and very nice, and I'm glad they included this with the Heyman. Kind of upgraded the figure itself, not just leaving it to be the, you know, the Heyman from that three-pack itself. You actually get both championships there. I think that three-pack only came with the Blue Universal title, but I could be wrong about that. And then for his interchangeable heads, this is the OG head sculpt that came in that three pack that ended up at TJ Maxx and things. And it's a good head sculpt. I like this Paul Heyman head sculpt. Very lifelike, very much realistic. I like it a lot. True effects. And then the other two are from a basic Paul Heyman. And then you have one that was from his previous build a figure that was Toys R Us exclusive. And I think it was a best of pay-per-view. So I can't remember which one. I want to say this is the build a figure head, but it could be this one. I want to say this one came on a basic though. I can't remember, but all three of them are great. They represent different eras. Obviously the one with the teeth showing does have the man bun and so does the smirk you get three different ones and you can kind of tell that you know the other two don't have the true effects applied but the paint apps are good and they kind of fit that era of Paul Heyman I don't hate them I think all three of them are solid but I like the more modern one the more modern one is probably the most realistic Loki looks like a shrunken down version of Paul Heyman it's kind of scary looking I feel like it's going to look at me at any moment and then for interchangeable hands you do get some mic holding hands you get the ricochet Kawhi Leonard Johnny Gargano entrance handshaking style hands and then you do get some pointer fingers to point at different people in the arena and tell them to shut the hell up. So getting into the wise man, starting out with the head skull, we already took a look at it, and uh, this figure was released so soon ago that if you compare the two, this figure, I, I do like the head sculpt here better. I feel that, you know, my other one seems to be looking off to the right. So this is the newest one. This is the older one. And, I mean, they both have double jointed arms. All the colors are virtually the same. I'm not seeing any differences between the two, but the suit is nice. The tie is nice. I do like that the head sculpt's looking straightforward. He does have a, you know, a potato dumpling body going on right here. It's navy coat and double jointed arms which i like and you do have the posable legs and stuff they always do a really good job on the suited figures brown loafer kicks right there and again as far as comparisons this is the three pack and then this is the newest one i really i think i gave this figure the hardest time about being included in this wave just because i felt like it released yesterday so i didn't see a point in giving us this figure was my overall thoughts on it it's just weird how you know this figure just came out and we have so many more greatest hits waves coming that there's no telling what they're going to plug into these waves, man. I'm just telling you, you just need to be very, very cautious about what you're holding on to if you want to get the bang for your buck. I'm telling you, man, 
I would move stuff. I would just start moving stuff because I think eventually it's going to get re-released, especially when we have so many re-release waves. I just thought that this was a baffling one. I guess some people didn't have an opportunity to own it. I just didn't like that the turnaround time was so fast. I think we should have had to wait for a little bit, but I do appreciate the Paul Heyman figure. As it stands, I mean, I'm pretty sure it came in highly on my top 10 that year when that figure released. Was it 2023, I think? I, I'll have to look, but I want to say it was like number seven figure of the year or something in terms of elites, but I don't know. What the hell do I know? So for the Dead Man's Revenge Undertaker as Kane figure, we do get a championship, some interchangeable heads. we got a lot of stuff going on. I feel like deja vu kind of because we just reviewed that Kane, the Defining Moments Kane, because that is exactly what this head sculpt is, but you can see they actually painted the beard in there compared to the Defining Moments Kane, but it's essentially the exact same head sculpt from the Ultimate Edition, but it is painted well. Good paint apps on there, but it is a interchangeable cane head sculpt that is nice that you could use as a cane with dual sleeves or you could use it as Undertaker actually wearing the mask or you could use it as Undertaker removing the mask which is what this is and I've never liked this head sculpt I like the eye black on it the detail on the eye black you know and the makeup but I do not like this head sculpt I think it looks nothing like like Undertaker makes his head look so damn long and then you get this sculpted mask that just looks way too big it's so damn big and the hair is so big and then you can put this over this and I guess that works, but then when you put it on the figure, it just looks massive and it doesn't look natural. It does fit up in there nicely. It just doesn't look good on the figure, in my opinion, and I don't know. I, I do like that you get a loose mask. I think that's an awesome idea. I like masked accessories like Asuka and Sting from Jazzwares with the Supreme and things of that nature, but this right here just doesn't get it done for me. I think it's way too big and oversized, and it just looks crazy, so I don't know. It's still a cool accessory to have for maybe display or something. You can get creative with it. I just think the head's so long that it makes the mask look long and it throws it off. Like, look at the comparison between these two. You can see how much bigger the head is. It just looks kind of ridiculous. And then we also get a WWF Championship, one of my favorite championships of all time, and it's always nice to add one of these to the collection, of course. This set is just packed full of championships, man. So if you guys collect belts, this is the belt collector way. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get regular hands here that are mic holding, and the right hand is just a molded hand in black. It doesn't have any glove sculpt, which we talked about with the cane from the Defining Moments set. I hate when they do that. I just think it's a missing detail. And then we have the choke slamming or priest choke slamming style hands. You have the left off hand that's wide open for a choke slam, or you could do like, you know, rising the dead, or you know, for the pyro and the turnbuckles. But then the right hand with the glove is so nice. I talked about this with the Defining Moments cane as well. I just love the sculpt of this. It just looks so good. You can see the paneling on the back and the, you know, just the stretched out glove. I just think that's awesome. So they do, they do a good job on these. I just want to see this glove mold executed more across the line. And the Undertaker as Kane. I want you guys to see this real quick. We're going to put this mask on here so you can see how ridiculous it looks. He just looks like a damn, he looks like the, the mascot major chip hazard off of Small Soldiers. And I know nobody will get that reference, but my lord, his head's massive. I do like the expression of the Undertaker taker here. I just don't like the head sculpt. I think it's too long and looks a bit weird. Again, I do like the details of the makeup and everything like that. And I do like the figure. It's a double jointed dual sleeve cane that you could easily make into cane. And I don't know what I'm going to do with my first version and my second version. We are going to compare the two as well. But I used to use my other one as cane. Should I use this one as cane now and put that one on the Undertaker shelf? I don't know what to do right now, but I love the gloves and the gauntlets here. It's essentially just the same stuff, man. I mean, you have painted red and black all the way down, pins in the legs, but they do have Ultimate Edition boots here, which are very nice. I think that was a clean little piece right there to plug in. I like when they include the Ultimate boots on the Elite figures. Now, as far as articulation, he has the damn Rey Mysterio Elite 1 syndrome where you try to push the leg forward and it gets cut and, and you know stuck and the other leg has it too so it's just one big piece of shish and I did find it hard to kind of stand the guy up but if you want to bring in the other figure here is the OG that I've been using as Kane for you know the last three years or whatever it is so the boots are different and then that's you know the double jointed arms the reds are slightly different this is a lighter red than this one I feel like this red would be more accurate I don't know if you guys can tell but I mean, essentially, they're the same thing. I don't know if you guys can tell. Also, the peg over here is skin tone compared to the black peg over here. So, definitely some some improvements between the two, but nothing that's... I didn't really care for this figure when it first released. It wasn't my favorite ever, so... It's mainly the head sculpt, though. It just kind of... I don't know. I feel like it should look more like that, but I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. And for Rikishi's accessories, you do get quite a bit again. I mean, they have loaded up this entire wave. I've talked about it before. This entire set is loaded up with accessories, which is always appreciated. But we do have this waist wrap here, which is, you know, kind of the classic Mattel deal. I do, all, I've always liked the lettering for the Rikishi. I just thought that always looked good. But it is a big rubber piece that does attach. You can wrap it around the waist and then attach it up there with the belt loop. And this isn't my favorite. I wish it was cloth. I just don't like the rubber. And once you put this on there, it's pretty much sealed. You're not going to be able to articulate him, really. So, I don't know. Not 
my favorite piece. Just, I mean, it's cool. It's got some cool wrinkles and logos and stuff, and the colors are nice, and they pop very nicely. I just don't really care for it. I, I don't like the big hunks of rubber like that or pieces like that. So we're moving on to another accessory and another underrated championship, man, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship from the Ruthless Aggression Era. And any Ruthless Aggression Era championship is, is underrated, man. They're just so good. What a time to be alive. If you missed it, you missed wrestling. You know what I mean? It's sad. Just very sad. Sad loser. But this title looks very good. I like it a lot. I've always been a fan of this. Even though we only get one, I think it's nice to have. Always love a bonus title. Then we also get a pair of yellow sunglasses, which don't really fit the figure all that well, to be honest. But, you know, it was Elite 27. Maybe they weren't really thinking about what they were doing. I want to move this back just a hair so you guys can see. It doesn't really grip on anything. Like, it'll stay on there, but you can see it doesn't hook on his ears or anything. So, there is that. But, I don't know. It doesn't look bad. It's just, you know, the sunglasses. At least it comes with something. And outside of that, you do get the mic holding hands for your Rikishi. You get the fisted hands to beat the hell out of people. And another day, another Johnny Gargano handshaking entrance style Ricochet Kawhi Leonard classic hands. And wrapping up from the vault series number two, we are going to get into the Rikishi figure. And the head sculpt, I don't know, man. It looks very cartoony. Reminds me a lot of the Elite 27, which I do believe this figure is based on. I just, why would you, why would they make, you had the Elite 27, you made the Hall of Champions, then they did a Greatest Hits version, and we're kind of seeing the same thing with the Yokozuna, where they're re-releasing the exact same figure again for no reason when we just got an Ultimate Edition. I know we don't have an Ultimate Rikishi, it's just very odd that they do this, but I don't know, I like the paint apps better on this, on this other Greatest Hits Rikishi better than this, and I just think it looks more realistic, and it may be a different time frame, I got it, but necklace looks good and everything. He does have the waist wrap in there, the elbow pads, got the big black wrist tape, do have the Rikishi across the front with the tassels hanging down. His butt was definitely more exposed than this, but, you know, they gotta, they're not gonna put all that cheekage into a figure, man, you know, so. Big chunky thighs, though, big knee pads, and then he does have the solid black kick pads in there. I like Rikishi. I've always liked Rikishi a lot. And here is your kind of comparison between the Greatest Hits one, and I think all that's different really is like a repaint of the waist wrap. Outside of that, double jointed arms, all that, all of that other stuff is the same. I don't really know, man. It's very crazy. I, just, God, I think this is what annoys me about the Greatest Hits and the From the Vault and stuff is because we're getting a lot of repeat figures that uh, just don't warrant it at this juncture, so I don't know. I, I don't know. No idea, Brad. No idea, but the Rikishi is good. Very good. If you missed out on Rikishi, this is the time to cash in, but we just got a Greatest Hits Rikishi not that long ago. I don't know what you're thinking there. It is that time we are going to rank from the vault series number two ringside exclusive wave from worst to best. All eight figures. All eight figures are going to be represented here in my ranking. And again, man, just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean that it's perfect. And just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean that it's the worst shish ever. It's probably a mixture of all of the above, you know. So at the bottom, I had to go with the Road Dog figure. Just, you know, completely loose right here. Super loose. Don't like it. Just not good. Don't like the head sculpt. No black wrist tape. No shirt sculpted on. Just don't really care for it, man. Just don't really care for it. Which goes into number seven, which is going to be Rikishi. Similar to the From the Vault Series 3 Yokozuna, I just don't think this figure was necessary when we just got it not too long ago. And this would be our fourth Rikishi that is just, it looks the exact same to me. It's just not a lot, you know, not a lot humming right there. Number six is going to be the Diesel figure. I did like the Diesel figure, but I don't know. I just, I, I'm not a big diesel guy and i i don't know i understand its inclusion it just wasn't my favorite and you could probably switch this one and the next one and maybe i got them mixed up because the next one is going to be the undertaker as kane i really don't really care for this figure all that much wasn't my first choice when learning about the from the vault series number three when learning about series two and from the vault i really didn't want the figure all that much and i felt the same way about this next figure but the figure's so damn good that what are you going to do man it's going to be the paul Heyman. it's such a good figure even if it didn't really belong in my mind i still think that overall it's too good to not include in the top four of this entire set it's a great figure it's just i don't think it was necessarily needed at this moment but what are you gonna do man next up at number three we do have the billy gun i really do like the billy gun figure updated you know cloth goods and everything it just looks and feels good it's not like road dog they changed some stuff up on road dog billy gun stayed the same the whole way through they just gave him a cloth goods shirt and i think it's good enough the hall of champions billy gun re-release here is very nice then we get down to two and one number two i went with eddie guerrero i love that og legends figure never really had an opportunity to own it and this is kind of just like an upgrade to our Shreddy Guerrero Ultimate Edition. So it's kind of like upgrading that figure in a way if you put some accessories with it. So I do like that. And coming in at number one is going to be DX Shawn Michaels because I think it's the best figure in the set. I think it's probably the most sought after figure in this set unless I'm mistaken. 
but I just think it looks so good, and I always like that figure and everything. Even if the head sculpt's not my first choice, it's better than just re-releasing it with the same exact head sculpt that we've come to know from Mattel and everything like that. But that is pretty much going to wrap the video, man. Hope you guys did enjoy wrapping it up on From the Vault Series number 2. My overall thoughts on this set is, I don't know, it doesn't move the needle all that much. And I can't remember my initial thoughts on the entire wave. You'd have to go back to WrestleMania 40 to see what I say. But... I'm pretty sure I liked some of the inclusions, and then some of the other inclusions, I was like, eh, what the hell is that? I don't really understand this one. So, I think it was Heyman and Rikishi that really bothered me the most on selection, and then the rest, I could understand it, but then, you know, there's certain hiccups in the wave and everything. I don't know. I think that Series 1 of the Greatest, or From the Vault, I'm trying to think. It was definitely better than this. From the Vault Series 1 was definitely better than Series 2, but nonetheless, man, I'm getting the hell out. I hope you guys did enjoy. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all you fellas. Thank you guys so very much for your support, as always. I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so very much, but I'm getting the hell out. Hope you guys did enjoy. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.